I'd like to start this video with a heartfelt message for any Sunderland fans watching. <laughs> As in what's better than a player scoring a winning goal for Lincoln, it's a player scoring a winning goal for Lincoln with a Shearer celebration imitation. Yesterday's evening meeting is the fourth time I've been to Catrick Racecourse. The first time was in June 2015. Also went to the Catrick Dash in October 2018 and the North Yorkshire Grand National in January 2020. That red where I went to on Monday, it is located in North Yorkshire. It is in Catrick Bridge, which can be seen here to the northwest of Catrick and to the east of Catrick Garrison, which is a large area where the Tesco supermarket is shown on the map. I said in my webcar video, which you can watch by clicking on this link, that I drink of a Quaker House pub, and mistakenly called it Charger House, in Darlington before racing. And due to the expected weather conditions in Darlington and Catterick, I probably wouldn't be able to take any videos. There was more time, in fact, than the weather in the end that caused this issue, so I called a video in my flat, but I'll include a few pictures I took. It was the first time I drank in Darlington, having caught the train from Newcastle. It's also the first time I've worn my red raincoat at the station in well over a year. Someone asked me about the train to turn up at the station, and then someone else asked me something. And I remember on occasions when wearing this red raincoat, I'd be confused to remember of LNER staff. The Quake House pub in Darlington is a nice smallest place. I was a little hidden away at Mechanic's Yard off Skinnergate, as can be seen here. So if you want a pub, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe that you can drink in the Quaker house. Got a little, a little confused trying to find it, which left me only 20 minutes from my pint of I think best bit over there. A nice enough pint, but drinking it a little too quick for me to get the bus. I did say my red car video was a 20 minute walk from Colburn 5th Avenue bus stop to Cadwick Bridge. Having checked the evening before, I realised it was nearer 35 minutes which again left me rather short of time from a bus up to a race course before the first race and for the bus after the last race. However, that was not a worrying transport issue that I picked up the evening before. I realised I misread the, H the X26 timetable. I realised the PDF I downloaded from that X26 page from a Reavers website said that the 9.30 and 10.30 buses to Darlington from Coburn were bank holiday only. This was, of course, a complete disaster. And there was no way I could get back to Newcastle after the meeting. I decided to better check a Weaver's Journey Planner on their website to see if there was another option, only for it to suggest those two buses. Having checked another couple of websites, it became clear that either the PDF was wrong, or everything else including Weaver's own Journey Planner was wrong, so that I had to send a Twitter message to a Weaver's Yorkshire account to query this, as I suspected the PDF was wrong, but I was worried it might not be. At least I did reply yesterday saying that in effect the PDF was inaccurate. This meant I could get back in the, and indeed the bus did turn up at 9.30pm in Coburn. I mentioned Coburn in my webcast video and no one else seems to take the 35 minute walk between Coburn 5th Avenue bus stop to and from the racecourse. It's the only way I know to get back from racecourse and public transport. Now there is a shuttle bus, allegedly, provided by the racecourse from Richmond to the course. I looked for this in Richmond when I went in 2015 for the first time and never saw it, meaning I had to take the X26 from, from Richmond, the commercial bus, and missed the first race. And I didn't notice it after racing either that day. It's rather put me off trying to find that bus ever again, for, with allegedly the racecourse put on. Anyway, this is the route I used to walk to the racecourse from Coburn, and all of that is paved, you can work, perfe work perfectly well. It's a slightly tricky junction you need to get across, but you can actually do it quite easily. This is the picture taken on the way to the course. The weather is murky, the grey structure to the front is probably an A1M sign, as the motorway is between where I was and the course. I mentioned in my red car video that Catrick would be demanding photo ID to get in, which I felt was unnecessary, and I also stated I expected that, like Redcon, reality would just let people in having checked their ticket. And surprisingly, this is exactly what happened at Catwick. I don't appreciate having to take my passport to the only photo ID I have. Like Redcar, Catwick is a minority of people with an A4 the courses colours on rather than having a waste card for sale. As I said at Redcar video, I think that's maybe just the owners, trainers and the members. I'm not sure really who had that, so you didn't see it offered to anyone else. Weather got really bad on occasions, the ground switched to outright heavy in the middle of a meeting, and this picture shows the rain from the grandstand.
so that appeared to be it. I caught the 930 bus from Coburn and at least I had a, had a transport issue on the way back to Darlington, unlike the previous three occasions I've been to catch a race course. 2015 I got the X26 bus from Richmond to a race course having us then failed to find the alleged free shuttle bus and asked for a return, but as I pointed out the last bus back was circa 4 o'clock in the afternoon. This meant I had to find another way back after the meeting. I eventually caught a bus back from Angel Pub at Catholic Village at about 6pm, but helped at the timetable for it being on the wrong side of the street. I think even this option doesn't exist now. When I think of doing the 2018 North Yorkshire Grand National meeting, I literally worked out it would take me 5 hours to get home. The meeting ended at 3.45pm due to being in January, and of course, uh, start and end of the year because of when the sun goes down, yet the meeting starts and end a lot earlier. And I need to take a bus uh, two hours later from Brompton and Swell, out of basically the first bus, to Richmond and the extra six to Darlington. Luckily I thought better of it. I had checked Google Street View to see if it was possible to walk from Colburn to a race course and thought it was impossible. Thankfully, in desperation as much as anything, I checked another time and realised it in fact it was possible, possible to do this. Visit to the course in October 2018, I waited by a bus stop for a bus back to, to Darlington from Colburn. We waited a long time to check the bus stop by texting on my, on my phone, only to realise there was indeed a timetable by the bus stop, it's just that no buses stopped there anymore. I had to skip going to the 2019 North Yorkshire Grand National, and this time there was a bus strike, so eventually made it to that meeting during January 2020. This time I learned from my mistake, which is by a large bus stop, with, with, with bus stop literally written in the world, a very large bus stop indeed. And this is a snatched picture of it this year while I was passing on the bus down. Tradition says that if a bus goes past a large bus stop on the opposite side of the road, it's sensible to believe it will go back that way and wait right there. But not for Weaver and the X26. Which a long time the X26 had turned up, I happened to look to the left and saw the bus going down the road and realised it doesn't go back the same way. Finally, after I got on a bus at the same stop in which it arrived at a blue narrow way, I don't know why that street has the name, but apparently it's on a street in the country called that. I was pretty annoyed using polite language as I bought some cheap Bluetooth earphones for my, for my phone and managed to accidentally smash them on my way back to Colburn. But at least there was no drama getting back for 10.30 to enter Newcastle from Darlington. That was until I got to the station and realised it had been cancelled. I had a trans pen and only ticket, meaning I have to wait an hour for the train rather than catch the 11.20 LNER train. Even I got that one, I missed the last metro train back, so I'd have to walk 45 minutes home to my flat in Newcastle. I'm not willing to pay for a taxi. Problem was, I wasn't sure whether we needed to book to be on that later Trans Pen and Express train, and there was no one to ask. I mi I'll admit I missed an information sign to, to an office, and after 20 minutes found out where I should ask, and I talked to a station manager. He said he'd see me walking around, and I told him missed two trains to Newcastle, and mentioning I think the 10.08 train. I said, I said to him, that's interesting, I've only been here 20 minutes. What I really wanted to say is, this new dickhead, I just got here quite recently, how on earth could I have caught trains which left before I got here? I then asked about the 1053 train being cancelled, and he says no trains have been cancelled. We're not talking peak time Clapham Junction, where station manager might miss, ev miss everything happening, as it's so busy, I might just not quite catch every detail about the train being cancelled. At Darlington, at that point, there are five trains on electronic notice board, and one has been said for, said for 20 minutes it's been cancelled. But as polite as I can be, but failing to avoid being slightly sarcastic, say, apart from the 1053. Amazingly, he asked me if that was in the morning. I pointed out it is now. Then she checks and says I have to wait for a trans Pennine train, as we just assumed to have to do anyway, so I have to wait an hour, well, fair enough. It's like annoying thing, because that part of I said if I'd seen the information points earlier, well, that's just enough time to uh, get back to the Quaker house, finally getting right the name, because they closed at 12 o'clock midnight. But unfortunately, by the time I worked this out, it was too late really sensibly to do that. I'm actually lost. I how Darlington's tr uh, station manager did not know the 1053 train had been cancelled and how he seemed to think I'd been there about 20, 40 minutes longer than I had been. Let's hope there's no transport disaster on Wednesday as I'm off to Hamilton Racecourse for the day. Using Ryan's train tickets from Newcastle to Hampton via Carlisle, it's only £27. That's not £27 to actually get there, it's literally £13.50 each way. If for 301 miles from London Pub is opening Carl Station, 
has a panic there, but I'm not sure their Twitter feed and Facebook feed are very out of date, and I feel they might not be open yet. If they are not, I might try to, uh, to find, get a pint in the last Zebra pub before my Glasgow connection. I won't have the chance to have a drink before racing at Hamilton, but I've got a couple of hours after racing before the train back, and I'll have a couple in the George Bar, which seems the only real layout real L option in Hamilton. In fact, I looked online and in fact it appears that not only is there not much real L in Hamilton, in the, in the active area at all of Scotland there, near Hamilton, there's not much at all in terms of real L. I do have time in Carlisle for another pint for my Newcastle train, however I drank a lot less over last year and I may not be up to it after two pints in Hamilton and one, one in Carlisle. Thanks for listening.